Good morning. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> no, I was ready. I'm good to see y'all out this morning in the house of the Lord. Uh, if you have any visitors, please just make yourself welcome. And uh, I tell you, I'm thankful for the week that God's given us here and uh, uh, for watching over and taking care of us and uh, kind of keeping us safe through this week. I tell you, we had some, uh, could have been a lot worse, some pretty rough storms and stuff, but uh, some much needed rain and uh, God's give us, but uh, like I said, he's uh, again, he was there for us, but uh, <clears throat> I just want to uh, say it is good to be here, and uh, we uh, we got one little extra one here in the, in the pew with us this morning, and uh, you know, the Lord's, uh, Lord's really blessed this week, um, but um, before we get started in any announcements or anything, does anybody have any special prayer requests at this time? Amen. Remember these. Any others? Just remember, Eddie, he's having surgery Tuesday. Amen. Remember, Brother Eddie, is a surgery coming up to you? Yes. Yes. Remember, Miss Margaret there. Remember these. Any others? Yeah. yeah. Remember, Brother James. James' mother, too. Keep her in your prayers. Any others? Now, remember uh, also, as mentioned this morning, uh, all the ones in Texas there with the, uh, um, the shooting that happened there at the school. Um, we, uh, I thank God we have not had nothing happen here. I know there have been some, I guess you'd say, some threats on and off, uh, some things will uh, happening, but uh, we uh, just need to keep praying for those, to pray for those families. And uh, we know, uh, I know, no doubt there's a lot of, uh, comments that I've even heard from some of our own families here. There's a little hesitant uh, the next day to send their own child to school around here. So uh, um, it's a sad thing we see what the, what the world we're living in here today. Um, but we don't uh, <clears throat> we don't need to get to the point that we're scared enough to, and we forget that who is still in control. Um, God is still in control, and uh, you know it's 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 tough to understand why things happen sometimes the way they do. Um, but um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful. I'd say I'm, I'm thankful that God does not allow us to see our future ahead, because I'm telling you, a lot of things would be scary. I mean, for indiv- us individually, you know, it's. Uh, but um, we just need to keep praying and uh, and living living our life and uh, spreading God's word for Him. So, uh, but um, as as too, there was many prayer requests this morning uh, as went out. Continue uh, to remember the Kennedy family. Um, as Miss Colleen, she's went home to be with the Lord. Um, you know, a, a great saint of God there, and, uh, and she is truly a blessing and uh, be missed. But uh, she, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt uh, in my mind where she is this morning. You know, but uh, remember her, remember the family there as they go through this time. And uh, a lot of our elders and shut in still remember. Uh, I want to keep uh, mentioning, but still do remember Miss uh, Shirley Carter. Um, you know, she. Uh, this has been some lonely days for her and Brother Ted's gone on, be with Lord there. But uh, keep her in your prayers and uh, all of our elders there. Um, but is there anything else this morning? Any other prayer request? If not, then uh, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Darrell uh, if you would to lead us as we pray this morning. Thank you, Brother Darrell, there for that good humble prayer. <clears throat> and uh, also, uh, as you know, uh, as we've been celebrating this is Memorial Day uh, weekend here, and uh, you know, I'm thankful for all of our veterans, all those that have served. And uh, you know, we have many uh, that uh, has lost their lives in, on the battlefield there. And uh, you know, we uh, 
I watch, I know Tanya sometimes she says, I don't know why you won't watch some men, but these documentaries and things about the older wars, you know, I might have I might have been here and had we've had wars to go on during my lifetime, but a lot of the older ones too to hear uh, some of the things that has happened and things that they've been through, but to uh, uh, sit down and uh, to talk with some of our veterans and uh, to hear that, you know, that's been on the battlefield and uh, some of the things that they have witnessed, uh, some of their fellow sol uh, soldiers there that has uh, lost their lives or give their lives there for our country. Um, you know, it's a really blessing. We need to be thankful uh, today uh, for the country that we live in, even though the shape a lot of it's in, but um, we, uh, they're still, um, you know, I'm thankful we ain't got soldiers just going over here and say, all right, I'm done. You know, our country's not worth fighting for no more. Our soldiers aren't like that. And they're still going over our, giving their lives today, um, even though something may come up tomorrow, just kind of question why we're still fighting for this country, you know, because, uh, you know, our country is that, is that good. We're, we are blessed. Um, but uh, just still do remember, like I said, remember the lost loved ones right there. Remember all the families that uh, they look back today and they remember a family member that gave their life um, for our country there today. <clears throat> but uh, this, uh, this morning, uh, just a couple, uh, got a couple of quick announcements right here. Uh, again, today we are, uh, uh, is our youth Sunday today and uh, continue. Uh, we have we had a great service so far, great teaching. Uh, one's opening up. Um, we've just been truly been a blessing, and uh, we'll continue this on. And uh, it's about the youngest preacher we could find here, so uh, we'll have to go him. <laughs> but uh, but no, I remember Brother Keith as he stands before us here. Uh, but today being Youth Sunday, um, after service today at 3 p.m., uh, the youth will be going to the, uh, to Mount Airy to the uh, the bowling lanes. Um, there we're going to be going bowling uh, to Mount Airy bowling lanes. So uh, just remember them and. Uh, I think it may go along, but uh, <laughs> they told me to take it easy. I said, yeah, I'm going to have to take a couple of Advil before I even get started, or I'm going to pay for it <laughs> in the next couple of days. But uh, just remember them as uh, we have a good, safe trip there um, and enjoy that time of fellowship there. Um, also, uh, uh, don't forget our, uh, well, we'll not be having service tonight, but don't forget our um, Wednesday night Bible study um, at this, uh, 7 o'clock. And uh, this, this coming Sunday, June the 5th, we will be resuming uh, to our Sunday school classrooms. Uh, we'll be going, going back to our, uh, our normal classrooms that we'll be having, so just remember that. Um, there at 9.45 there, uh, Sunday school will be starting, and uh, um, again, we will be getting in, uh, back into our regular. The adults will be back here in their normal classroom there. Of course, our teens will, uh, will be here and uh, have our classrooms downstairs there and uh, uh, the senior class out front right here. But um, just thankful we're able to get back to this point here. So just don't forget this. And June the 18th, we'll be coming up uh, the next food bank also. Uh, <clears throat> Bobby, yes. This Saturday, uh, don't yes. forget this Saturday is the closed drive for Ebenezer's Children's Home. So just drive around, drop your clothes yes. off, and we'll be taking that to them. Yes. And what time again does that start? From 12 to 2. From 12 to 2 this coming Saturday will be our drive around um, uh, food uh, uh, closed drive for Ebenezer's and uh, again just bring them through and we'll drop them off there so uh, we're going to be uh, taking uh, stuff up there so let's remember, remember that that's coming up um, <clears throat> real quick right here um, we've got a, a thank you card here it says Pastor Wood and Church thank you for allowing us to be with be with y'all it was such a blessing to preach and share the ministry thank you for the generous love gift and it says please pray for us as we reach America America's troubled youth. We are, we are all, we are praying for y'all and loving Christ. This Rock of Ages uh, Ministries, and this is Christopher and Ruth Shoemate. Uh, so do continue to keep them in your prayers. And uh, also, I won't go over all this, but we have a uh, letter here from uh, our missionaries, the Moore family, um, and uh, this is the missionaries there in Utah, um, <clears throat> and it says. Uh, May has been another month of uh, God's blessings and provision for our family and ministry. Uh, it says, Gideon and I traveled to Castle Rock, Colorado, May the 2nd through the 5th for, for a church planners conference. We had a good time seeing uh, some friends from across the country with a heart for church planning in the United States. And on the 8th, uh, we celebrated Mother's Day, and on the 15th, we recognized our four high school graduates. We gave roses and gift cards to all the mothers. 
uh, graduates received a beautiful uh, Bible to celebrate their completion of high school. Um, and it says, as uh, the last half of the month was very, uh, was super busy, we traveled up to Logan, Utah, on the 20th, 23rd and 24th uh, for the vi- for the Vision Week at Mount Logan Baptist. On the 25th, Brother Todd McKinnon, assistant director of our missions board, preached for us and did a tremendous job. Thursday morning, the 26th, we headed out uh, for for our first road trip. Uh, since we came off the road, since we traveled to Nolanville, Texas for a Christian uh, school graduation on Friday. Saturday we drove up to uh, Ufula, I think it's right, Oklahoma, um, where we sang for a camp meeting at Calvary Baptist Church, and I was, I was able to preach on Tuesday morning. But, um, <clears throat> and it continues on a few more things right there, but uh, this continuing says, uh, and prayer there is the souls. Prayer for the souls uh, saved and laborers. And, uh, and this is the Moore family. So uh, we'll post this on. We'll try to keep these uh, swapped out and just uh, uh, look at that there on your way out there. But um, and uh, also here uh, we have a uh, a letter here to keep us updated here from uh, uh, Karen Gregory here and it says uh, to all churches. This is the annual report. Uh, to keep everyone up to date on the property and upkeep and maintenance for the baptismal site on the property of Charlie and Lucille Gamble. It's, it's the time of year again, baptizing season has started. If there is any that is interested in helping with the, uh, with the upkeep, mowing, weed eating, dipping out, uh, dipping out the creek and all maintenance, uh, all donations are appreciated. Please keep mom in your prayers as, as most probably know she signed herself into Pruitt Healthcare last October. Her health is declining and she felt she wasn't able to be at home any longer. And as of May the 15th, 2022, there have been 4,434 precious souls baptized in this little creek. But it just goes on to say, if, um, gives the, uh, the address there uh, if you want to, for our scheduling here and uh, the ad, her address there for any donations there. So uh, for uh, Miss Karen Gregory there. And says thank you all and God bless. <clears throat> so, uh, as far as announcements, I think that's all I've got. Is there anything I've left out? All right. If not, then uh, at this time, I like to ask you all to get a hymnal and turn to page three forty six. Page three forty six at the top of the page. Before we sing, I don't know if you already talked with. Hey, no, I didn't All know right. if you can do this preaching. Mind, Brother Dave, would you mind? Let's just go ahead and do that now. Yeah. I'd appreciate that. Too. Thank you. Good morning. Teacher Keith asked me to lead these to honor. We have two veterans going to going to hold our flags and then young Jeremiah uh, offered to do the Bible and I thought this is very fitting because this demonstrates people who are willing to serve and why we're willing to serve for, for, for our children and our future so that they may grow up in a land where they can, can learn about Jesus and have the freedom and, and that's why we make these sacrifices not for ourselves but for those that we love. And first we're going to pledge allegiance to the American flag. Attention, salute, I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior, for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all mankind in service and love. And now to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. 
Thank you. Good job, buddy. <coughs> Let's all, if you will, please stand and get a book and turn to page 346.
Sunday, this song is not just for the youth, even though we perceive it as a child song. But y'all join us in the one, can you do this love to me? Y'all sing y'all, okay? Jesus loves me. You know, I don't want to get up here and have doom and gloom, but I can't get this off my mind. Um, discipline is a big factor in our life. Discipline, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior, using punishment to correct disobedience. Now, I didn't say uh, to abuse a child. You know, this book that's been given to us, it's got rules in it. We find over in uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 13, thou shalt not kill. You know, even in the book of uh, Genesis there, what happened there? Cain slew Abel. There wasn't guns in. This earth has a sin problem. It's not the weapons. If I'm out of line, tell me. Okay. <laughs> um, God just blamed the rock that he used it. Exactly. There you go. See, Keith's done got my piece. Did you see five notes? <laughs> no. um, telling kids no is okay. Um, I told the kids out here this morning, I said it takes a man and it takes a woman to have a kid. I know things come up, and sometimes moms and dads may separate. But you need to work together. These kids, the little ones that's involved, shouldn't have to pay the penalty. They should not be in a tug of war. I've worked with kids a lot at the daycare. You see it. They get everything they want. Okay, when they get to school, you get notes at home. They go in the principal's office. What happens? Where's the discipline at? Okay. Um, I read. I found this thing on Facebook. Some are teetotal against Facebook, but I try to use it um, as a tool to, to to see what's going on, read and get other people's opinions and stuff. Read this and I passed it on to Keith too. You have 18 years to train your child not to steal, not to shoot, or stab someone burn down buildings, laser people's eyes, make fun of others, bully, some, bully someone just because you want to, or rewrite our history, flip cars over, block traffic, attack other people just because you're too lazy to get a job, work, make money to buy what you want. Not what you need, just what you want. The list goes on and on. Who's failed the kids? I, I had to, I had to, I, I wasn't it. perfect. Eddie and I didn't make all the right decisions, but it starts at home 
to, to teach these kids, bring yes, them to church. Right. This is the best book you'll ever give them. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> here at church, the church plays a big part of the role. Absolutely. But 9.45 to 12.45, 1, 3, whatever time we get out. <laughs> Let's say he gives us three hours at church, okay? Three hours, one evening at night, one on Wednesday, five hours max. What happens to the other hours? Um, stop blaming someone else. Mm -hmm. These kids up here, they'll respect you if you give them discipline. God gave us these children. The Lord's blessed me with five and one more coming. Yes, I've told them no. Yeah. Yeah. I've not whipped the grandkids. Kids, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not whip the grandkids, but I've come very close because I love them and they need to know right from wrong. Amen. What does Proverbs 22, 6 tell us? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What does our kids see at home? At grandma's house? At grandpa's house? Aunts and uncles? What do they see at the neighbor's house? What do they hear on the way home from church? What do they hear when dad, mom and daddy walks in the door? We need to teach them right from wrong. Um, we need to put God first in these kids' lives. Get to know your child. I read something, and, and that was one of the topics, and I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Do you send them into the room? Are they on their I'm not up to date on the, all this Xbox or whatever and all now. Know what they're listening to on the music. Some of this, I don't care for it at all. I don't listen to it. Watch what they're, listen and watch what they're watching on TV. Eddie brought it to my attention the other day, a show that Jeremiah likes. We've quit letting him watch it because it was two women raising two kids on a cartoon. Weezer and I used to take kids to watch rated G movies. We ain't done that in how many years? They don't make G movies. No. What's happened? Have we just sat back? These kids are, right, are our responsibility. Amen. We, Amen. we have got to step up. Amen. When your child is out of line, they do need to, dis to be disciplined. As a young child, they can't get a toy every time they go to town. Have it their way. It's not Burger King. And they should not be telling the adults what to do. Right. I've seen that a lot. Teach them respect for others. The word respect is just about took out of the dictionary anymore. Show them love. This old world needs Jesus. Amen. And like I said, it's not the guns and it's not the ball bats. Um, here's a phrase that I use. How many people get car killed in a car wreck? Are they trying to take our cars from us? Mm -hmm. If somebody's back behind that wheel driving it, they probably have had one or two. You know, they've hit somebody, but are they trying to take our cars? No. They're trying to take our guns though, but somebody's got to pull that trigger. Sin is our problem. We need to teach our kids right from wrong. What we can start doing is praying for our kids. Keith, will you lead us in prayer for our kids? Amen. Let's pray together. The Heavenly Father, God, we approach your throne, God, today, Lord, with humbleness, God, but with boldness, Lord, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we realize, God, through our life that you can do what we can't. God, you can be places where we can't be. And you can for, perform miracles whenever we see that there is no way. And God, truly, we live in a day, day and an hour, Lord. It seems like a trouble and trials and tribulations on every hand. And, and it seems like the overwhelmingly it's directed towards our young people, our teenagers, and our children. And truly, the ugliness of this sin, God, is the innocent ones, Lord, has to pay the price. God, I know the Heavenly Father, we have been walking a far peace. And God, from you, Lord, and every home God is represented here today could truly be honest and say we could have done more and we can do more. Lord, help us to renew that commitment, God, 
to establish the boundaries of thy precious word in our hearts and in our homes, God, in our churches and, and truly in our nation. But God, it must start somewhere. And it must start with me. It must start with the house of God. This is where judgment must start. God, I know you hold us accountable. God, may today we start holding ourselves accountable. And God, not point the fingers and pass the blame and say the government, the law enforcement, the teachers, the preachers, and the church should do more. God, may all of us take our responsibility. Lord, seriously, God, as parents, as grandparents, aunts and uncles, as church members, as teachers, and just members of society, and help us to do our part to be an example to these young people. And God, truly, we look into the eyes of the, these deranged young men that is uh, performing <coughs> such heinous acts as what took place this week. God, we see a hurt, we see an emptiness, and we see a void. God, these, these young people are not being told about hope. They're not being given a glimpse into a life everlasting. God, we fail them. Lord, help us, to God, to repent of our sin. And as a nation, confess our sin. And look to you and turn from our wicked way. And then, and only then, our nation will be healed. But it must, it must start with the children of God. Lord, we love you and ask your protection on our children, young and old alike. Put a hedge about them. But God, may they stay inside that hedge of protection. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you in Christ's name. If you see someone falling behind, walk beside them. If you see someone being ignored, find a way to include them. Always remind people of their worth. One small act could mean the world to them. So, you know, to you kids, I love you. And like I told you this morning, if if there's anything that you need, if you're in trouble with something, something going on, you've got a church here that loves you. You can ask, come to, come to the preacher, come to the teachers. We're here at the deacons. We're here for you. Don't, don't feel like you're an outcast. And what is it that I always tell you? Put God first, God first in everything that you do. All right, we're going to sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children
Amen. Thank you, Miss Teresa. And I want to say thank you to each and every one that took part in our uh, youth service. And uh, we appreciate it from Sunday school this morning. It's been such a blessing. And truly, it is a blessing to be in the house of God. All right. And uh, you know what? The only reason you uh, have to stay till 12 31 o'clock is preacher is quarter to one before he gets. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, it's all, it's all in the hands of the Lord, and it's been such a joy to, to be a part of the service here today. It started off even, uh, you know, unfortunately due to sickness, uh, Brother Jonathan and Leanne was not able to be here, and uh, we um, uh, went into the back. I seen a couple of the young teenagers uh, went into the back room, and uh, I said, uh, you know, I hate that, to tell you, but uh, they're not going to be able to be here. And Miley spoke up and said, that's all right, I was teaching anyhow. Amen? And, uh, and, you know, I, and, and you know what, there Macy said, yes, said, we'll be all right. And there before you know it, Colton come in, went right back there, and they had Sunday school. Amen? Ain't that good church? Amen? I praise the Lord for that. We, and Colby stand up here uh, like he is 40 years old. Amen? I appreciate that. <laughs> and he complete control. Don't get excited. At least one of them's like that, right? Amen. And I'm going to tell you, Seth couldn't have done a better job. If you missed that Sunday school lesson this morning, out of the heart, wow, it's such a blessing. And uh, you pray for him. His back's uh, hurt and he's having to leave. But everyone that took part, just a great, great, uh, great, great, great service. And the pledges, wow, just you can't say uh, enough about those that give their life. Uh, on the line, uh, not only our military, but our first responders. We, uh, you know, I know it's Memorial Day for our military, but we got so many uh, of our law enforcement, our fir firefighters, uh, paramedics, others uh, that are on the front lines each and every day. And uh, I, I want to ask you to do something for me, okay? You pray, you pray for the preacher. I'm going to do something right here. Um, that uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm not going to have a, the right words. You're just going to have to overlook me on this, okay? I've got uh, the distinct privilege today to introduce you to someone. Bless you, Lord. I've got a little buddy here. That uh, look at this young man right here. I don't know where he gets those chubby cheeks from, do you? <laughs> but I want to introduce you to Mr. Walker Gray Wood, and he. <laughs> God bless you. And. Uh, all that's been said today, Brother Donnie, it, uh, just exemplifies the, the feeling that's in my heart whenever I look at my little buddy. And knowing that because, because of God, because of Jesus Christ, Brother Jack, this little man can face tomorrow, amen? It may be gloom and doom at times. But I promise you this, and I promise the Lord, and I promise Him that I'll do my best. I know Mom and Daddy's going to do their best 
I know the grandma over here is going to, grandma and grandpa, and over here, the middle, the, the, we're all going to, and we've got a church here that's going to do the same thing. And together, together, we can train our children. Look right here. He's going to get fussy. Yeah, that's all. You know why? He wants a bottle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. He said, preacher, it's already time for lunch, right? Hey, you pray for this family. Ain't it good to see them in the house of God this morning? Amen. You pray for them, Mama. God bless you. God bless you, Daddy. Amen. Yeah, you wonder if I was going to give him back, right? <laughs> you know, I uh, thought, you know, we're all, as a family, Brother Dave, you can tell it right, we're all better people today. Because of what God's blessed our home with through Him. I feel more love than, uh, and I know all you grandparents, so just wait till you get grandchildren. You were right, amen. I, with all my heart, I, I didn't know. They say it's medically impossible to uh, live with your heart outside your chest. But I, I say that's wrong. It's because the only time... You feel complete whenever you're around him. And, uh, and I owe God all honor. Uh, we, we know that he is God's uh, as every, children, every child in here and the ones that's getting ready to come. They're a heritage of the Lord. They belong to him. Never let us forget that. They are God's. They, he loans us them for just a little while to do the job that he's bid us to do to train them and teach them the word of God, that they too can be saved. Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10. Uh, you pray for us this, this morning as we, uh, we open up the word of God. And uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, God's good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't fall asleep on me, all right? We'll turn the air conditioner way down. All right. If somebody said, praise the Lord for that, amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> amen. We're going to have to get some of these older gentlemen shawls around here, amen. Uh, <laughs> behave, Keith. Amen. I appreciate Miss Teresa, don't y'all? Amen. I appreciate all of our youth workers. I appreciate Miss Amber as she was leading the youth choir up here. Every one of you, all of our teachers that take part. There's Miss Allie up there singing. She had a big night Thursday night. And she said everything went good. She got her diploma. Didn't take her but 14 years and two summers. Amen? <laughs> no, nah, I'm thinking she's very, very intelligent and smart. And got all of her smarts and intelligence from her daddy because she didn't leave him any. <laughs> Amen? But if you will, we want to read a passage of Scripture. It's all too common. We want to preach to you a message. I asked Miss Teresa, if she would, to leave this paper up here that she read she said, if you see someone falling behind, walk beside them. Little did she know that the title of the message the Lord has given us this morning is Leave No One Behind. Leave No One Behind. We're going to look into the, the parable of the Good Samaritan this morning. And we'll read out of Luke chapter number 10, starting at verse number 30, down through verse number 37. And we'll not keep you long or no longer than the Lord would have us to, but we want to preach to you a message on leave no one behind. What has happened here, a lawyer has come to Jesus and uh, try, trying to justify himself. He asked, uh, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And there the Lord says, well, what is, the, what is written in the law? What is God's word says? And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Not only love God, but God challenges us that we would love one another. Amen? And uh, he, being willing to justify himself, asked Jesus, said, well, just who is my neighbor? This is where we get the parable of the Good Samaritan. If you stand with me and the reverence and opening and the reading of the Word of God, we'll read those seven verses respectfully and we'll, we'll preach a message entitled, Leave No One Behind. The Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him 
half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But watch this. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when, the, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and to him, excuse me, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And this is the lawyer answered, and he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do Thou likewise. Let us pray again together. Heavenly Father, we are a bit of vessel. God, without you, Lord, in your hand, your anointing, God, we can't even walk, we can't even breathe, and we can't even speak. Even the breath, God, that we have belongs to you. Every heartbeat, Lord, that we enjoy, God, you cause to happen. Lord, we can do nothing of ourselves, Lord, and this is another instance of that, Lord. We cannot do anything without you, Lord. We need your anointing. We need your help, God. We're a people, uh, God, equally in need today. And Lord, I pray that you accomplish your work. And God, whatever it is that is in need, Lord, I pray to Heavenly Father that you fulfill it. If there's one here today that is lost, I pray that you would save them. God, if there's one here that is a child of God, but yet they're walking in sin, I pray to Heavenly Father that they would decide today to turn from their sin and cling to the cross. Lord, I pray to Heavenly Father for strength for the weak, encouragement for the discouraged. And Lord, I pray to Heavenly Father for a touch that only you can give. And I promise you, Lord, we'll never take any credit for anything, for we can do nothing without you. But thank God we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Lord, we'll give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. And amen. You can be seated. Uh, there's one thing that is prevalent in our military, whether it be the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. Uh, there's a creed. Uh, some word it a little bit differently. Uh, but their creed is and their promise one to another is that even whenever they go onto a battlefield that they'll leave no man behind. That is their creed and their promise and they're bound uh, together there in that creed one towards another. Uh, but yet even uh, we see heroes of our military, our law enforcement, even heroes of husbands and wives and, and fathers and mothers that uh, we see on the news that have taken place down through time. One of my favorite ones is, uh, happened there in, uh, I believe it was uh, in April uh, of 2009. Uh, do you remember back, as some of you remember back, whenever they had a problem there in the Somali waters of the American merchant ships that were being overtaken by pirates, just thugs that would jump onto those ships and overpower the crew and take over the ship and they would steal all those commodities, just merchant ships. Well, that took place there, I believe it was in April 12th of 2009. I believe it may have been called the Alabama. But there was a captain there uh, by, and by the name of Richard Phillips. Have you ever seen, or maybe some of you have read the book or even seen the movie that was made famous by the actor Tom Hanks. It was called Captain Phillips, I believe. Uh, but there, this captain was taken in captivity, and actually uh, the Somali parrots, there were three of them, that tried to escape, their plan had been, uh, been uh, interrupted and they tried to escape and they held hostage what they thought was truly uh, was someone that would cause uh, uh, the United States to pay a price, pay money uh, to get Captain Phillips back. Uh, so they escaped in a lifeboat and, uh, and sent him off. Uh, uh, they would try to escape. Uh, but yet they, they could not escape and uh, uh, they began hooking 
a tow line. Well, little did they know, uh, those Somali parents, little did they know what happened was uh, uh, that they made a call, amen, uh, to our military, and I believe it was SEAL Team 6 uh, sent some guys over there uh, to take care of the problem, amen, and take care of the problem they did, amen. Uh, three shots in unison from the bow of that ship took out those three parrots, amen, and rescued uh, Captain Phillips from the clutches of certain death. Preacher, what does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with a child of God. We find it in the teaching of the Word of God. And they were men that day was willing to put themselves in harm's way uh, to come to rescue someone that was weak, someone that was defenseless in a place that they could not help their self. Amen? If that is not the gospel of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ, I do not know what is. Uh, that one was sent from heaven. John 3, 16 tells us, For God sent His Son, amen, His only begotten Son, into a world, amen, not only to, uh, to walk here and to preach the gospel, but yet to give His life on a cross at Calvary uh, that every man, woman, boy, and girl may have everlasting life. Amen. He sent one to do a job that we could nor anybody could do themselves. Amen. I love the stories. Amen. Whenever uh, someone stands up uh, for, for a child that is being beat down, being ridiculed and being bullied. I don't know about now right or wrong. Amen. I, uh, listen, I, I just, uh, there's a time. Amen. Donnie, would you help me, please? There's a time, amen, you got to stand up and take matters in your own hands and say, I'm not going to stand by and let a wrong be uncorrected. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do my part, amen, to come to the defense of those that are weaker, amen, those that are helpless. Amen, we need to, we need to realize that God's children don't need to run off and leave anybody behind, amen. We've got so many people today. We've got a young people in an element. I thank God for our teenagers, amen, uh, that are here today in the house of God. Uh, but we've got an element of teenagers today that's never darkened the doors of the house of God. Uh, they never had the opportunity uh, to stand such as we did today and sing a song, uh, uh, Jesus loves me, of uh, this I know. Uh, we've got teenagers and young people today. I uh, don't don't even know they'll look you in the eye and say what is a Bible uh, they don't know about Jesus uh, they don't know about uh, uh, salvation they don't know about sin uh, and you know what they're doing they're starting off in life behind hey amen they're starting off behind if you don't believe it, uh, uh, they'll tell you this and if anybody that's ever had a child know you teach a child 90% of what they need to know in the first three years of their life Amen. You, if you'll do your job, Mom and Daddy, listen now. I need that for this, okay? If you'll do your job, Mom and Daddy, at home, huh? If you train that child up at home, teach that child up at home, you won't have to worry about him so much when you take him out. Amen. Whenever you go down at Walmart, amen, you watch that child running around up and down the aisle, screaming and a kicking. Mama or daddy go over there and grab him. I don't know. There's a button somewhere in here in those child's hands that whenever mama mashes it, their legs go limp. And they go right down to the ground. And all I can think about, Brother Rex, God bless that child. Uh, the mom and daddy sport them to the point where he thinks he can throw a temper tantrum and get that new Tonka truck uh, just to cause him to quit crying. Hey Amen. You're not helping that child. You're hurting that child. Uh, you're stealing a future uh, from that child. Uh, you're not teaching them right from wrong. Hey Amen. Sometimes it's good. Not only their children, but mamas sometimes it's good to be told no. Hey Amen. Y'all get that a little later. Hey Amen. Daddies too. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Sometimes no. Needs to be taught, amen. Need to know what no is. You know what? You ever? I, I, I love. Listen, it's like Glenda said. You know, it used to bother me to have small children come thinking it's going to break some of my knickknacks and things. But I said, she said already. Uh, Walker can come break anything he wants to in the house, amen. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I know it's the same way over there, isn't it? Amen. Well, let him come. No, now listen. We're going to teach him, amen. 
Amen. Mom and daddy's going to teach him. But it's got to start at the home. Amen. You can't wait till that child is six and seven. You know what? Mamas and daddies going down uh, to the jailhouse. Amen. Uh, picking up their children. And then they're calling the preacher. A uh, preacher pray. Uh, you don't know little Johnny has got little Debbie pregnant. Uh, and they don't know what to do. Uh, I'm going to tell you what happened. It's not didn't happen overnight. Uh, it happened back whenever they was first born. Uh, you didn't teach them and train them. Listen, I know sometimes the best you can do. Best you can do. Listen, we've all seen and come show the glory of God. But God help us that we wouldn't raise a generation that they're behind because they have not been told and they have not been taught. If you're not teaching and training your children, they're already starting life behind. Amen. When you start a race behind, it's hard. Amen. Amen. You got to run twice as fast, don't you, to even catch up where the rest are at. Listen, where the Bible says right here that a certain man went down from Jericho, excuse me, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him. I don't know why he was down there. I don't know why he was in a place to where they were thieves and robbers. I don't know what decisions he made to get him to that point. The first point I got, I want to make here this morning, is that we can't run off and leave those fallen Christians behind. We can't run off and leave those fallen Christians behind because we feel like that we're, we're spot on in our spiritual life and we're doing everything right and, and we're tithing, we're going to church and, and we're not doing all the uh, prevalent sins that's in the world and, and you let a brother or sister fall and you let them sin, you let them mess up, then what happens? We don't know what caused this man. I don't see Jesus Christ explaining it. Which leads me to believe I don't think it really mattered why he was down there. But this man fell among the thieves. He was stripped of his clothes. He was beaten to an inch of his life. I don't know what decisions he made. Or if it was no decision of himself. He was just a, a, a pawn in the hand of the devil. And the devil's crowd got a hold of him and beat him down. One thing I do know, he was in a place to where he was left behind. He was left behind. God help us, church. God break our heart. If we ever look down our nose or point our finger at someone else that is sin, a brother or sister of Christ, uh, that is sin, and, 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 and they're in a bad place. Uh, do you know what? Uh, it's our job. God charges us uh, uh, not to push them down, but to exalt them and lift them up, not condone their behavior. Not, but listen, you don't have to stand and thump them over the head and tell them what they've done wrong. If God has broke them down uh, like a 12-gauge shotgun, in a place that this young man's in, do you think they need you to tell them that they've messed up? God's good at his job. He don't need us to help him. He said, those that I love, I rebuke and chasten. It's not our job to rebuke and chasten those child, that child of God that's messed up. Our job is to love him. If you don't believe it, the Bible says, Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye watch our spiritual, restore, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know what God's word says is, look, whenever you see a brother or sister mess up, you see them not dressing right, not acting right, not, not being faithful to God, not raising their children, not doing right. Listen, don't just sit back there behind the car and talk about them and run them down, amen, if you really love them. You'll go to them, amen. Oh, that's hard, isn't it? Well, it's hard to go to somebody out of love and tell them, look, I see where you're headed. And I see what you're going through. Well, let me just throw this little tidbit. If you can't muster up enough backbone to go look at them in the eye and love and tell them, I love you, brother, but I want to help you. I've made the decision. I want you to see you go down that path. If we can't do that, God help us. We keep our mouth shut, not say a thing, amen. If you can't go to them and tell them in love uh, that you're there to help him uh, and that you want to work through it with them and you're there to support them, you want to see them back in fellowship and the good graces of God uh, for the sake of the Lord, uh, please keep your mouth shut. Uh, the more words you speak uh, against that person, uh, the farther down uh, and the farther away from God uh, you put that person, amen. 
God help us that we wouldn't do that. We'd be there to uplift and support that fallen Christian. We not leave anyone behind. Not only that, we got a lost generation this morning. We got people that are lost and undone. And without the Lord, they're in a, they're in a hopeless, a helpless situation. But thank God they're not in a hopeless situation. They see no way out. Do you know why you see sin and things happening like you do in the world today? It comes from a people that has no hope whatsoever. They have no hope. I've never been told about hope. I never a hope of a better life or a better day. A church, listen to me. I'm telling you, there's a lost, a world out there that's dying and going to hell. But what are we doing about it? We'll come in the house of God. I play church every once in a while whenever we don't have something else to do and ask God to bless our home and protect our kids I direct our path and you know what we expect the blessing of God on our life of that God will have none of that unless you put him first and the Bible says that Jesus told him listen not only to love God with all your heart soul and mind but love your brother amen as thyself amen Jesus Christ said my commandment is this that you love one another love one another greater love Hath no man than this done a man lay down his life for his friend. Amen. Thank God there's a, the greatest example was Jesus Christ on the cross. But you know what? He calls us to do that every day. What are you saying, preacher? Am I to die for someone else? It goes even deeper than that. But sometimes you've got to lay down your life. What means is you lay down some of the things that you want to do for your brother, for your friend. Sometimes you have to lay that computer down. Sometimes you've got to Maybe not go to that ball game. Sometimes you you got to maybe do some things that you don't want to do to help that brother, or that sister, or that lost person. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse number fourteen tells us: Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Warn them that are unruly. Oh, and with all the love in my heart, when was the last time? Oh, mom and daddy, grandma, grandpa. Uh, look at Ian right over there. Well, I'll tell you what, he had to carry bass up here this morning. Hey Amen. I, I love him. Love our youngins. Colton, God bless your heart. You're always faithful. When was the last time mom and daddy, aunt and uncle, you got a, you got a grandson, granddaughter, niece or, niece or nephew, or a friend beside, when was the last time you just gently warned them of a place called hell? He said, I exhort you that you warn them that are unruly. You know what, I'll tell you, uh, here not too long ago, uh, I seen a, a little child, and, and he was acting up. And boy, you know, you know how as a daddy, you want to, you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to straight. If I had him for about 30 minutes, and God just started breaking my heart, and that little fella come up to me, and I just, I pulled him up here, I said, I want you to know I love you. I want you to know I love you. You know, that's what, that's what our children need. They need love. Oh, God, they've got enough, enough working against them. They just need somebody. It wasn't that little feller's fault. I'm going to tell you, Mom and Daddy, listen, I'm going to quit going to our teenagers. I'm going to quit going to our youngins. I'm going to come to you whenever things are not right, Okay. It's been hard, brother, over the last couple of years seeing the hurt that our families have went through. We have saints of God used to sit here and even over the last two years, Brother Rex, some of the greatest saints of God that's ever set in the house of God has went on to be with the Lord. And those examples after examples are leaving here. What are we doing, adults? What are we doing, mom and dad, that we're picking up those mantles and being that example. Our military men are some of who I respect the most. Our military. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've had the, the awesome pleasure of being in the presence of some World War II veterans and, what, and seen the lives that they've lived. And I, I've been so impressed with the examples that they are. Not all of them, but I'm saying that generation. 
how they raised their family. They taught their families to love one another. Oh, listen, family. If there's an old, if you've got something in your heart or your family with a brother or sister, you better get that mess out. Because I'm going to tell you what. Hey, whenever the world turns against you, I found this out. If you've got a family that truly loves one another and they'll stick together and go forward. Listen, you can't fix it. You can't make somebody love you. But you can do your part, amen. You can do your part. Let's not run off and leave the lost behind. Amen. Listen, the lost are doing what the lost know to do. It's easy to sit back. Why don't they do this? And why don't they do that? I want you to know, Brother Colby read it this morning. Our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It's not going to be the big gaps, Brother Jack. It's not going to be the big wide open places that Satan walks through. He's going to take one of our teenage boys and he's going to whisper, said it's all right to have premarital sex. Everybody else is doing it. If, if it feels good, do it. Yeah, you ought not to do that. I, I believe they, they some they some that's listening to that. I believe that. And I'm going to tell you and warn you, warn you, sin has a consequence. Now, I don't care if Hollywood, if the United States passes laws saying it's all right, fornication, which is sex before wedlock, is a sin and it's an abomination unto God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, one thing that God hates, God hates divorce. Amen. Well, I've got some people in here and people in my life and in my family, amen, that has went through that, and that is ugly. That is awful. And you know, I've had people tell me I know exactly what, what God meant whenever he said he hates divorce because I hate it too. Amen. I had to go through it, and I hate it. But I'm telling you, young people, you walk circumspectly with the Holy Spirit. You guard your purity. You keep your life in line with the Word of God. And whenever you even think an inkling that God has put the right person in your life, you lay out the fleece and you pray over that. You make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt. And because whenever you make that commitment, you're not only making it to that other person, but you're making it to God. Amen. God help me. And we'll be held accountable for that. We've got too many of our children is starting now life behind, not only in life, but in their spiritual life because they've grown up in a broken home. I'm preaching this out of love because I'm going to tell you that God wants to use you to restore, restore. Our families, our churches, and our nation has not went too far. But one of these days, one day, God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. I believe whenever God calls his spirit home, the children of God, the church of the living God, will be caught up in a rapture, never, never more to be in this sinful earth. But what about those left behind? What about those left behind? What are we doing to restore those that are in sin and those that are lost. Those that are lost. I believe the first step, first step, we're going to close this, is to remember where we come from. Remember where we come from, amen. Where we were behind, amen. We were in a place we felt like we had no hope. We was lost as a ball in high weeds. Couldn't help ourselves. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the greatest show of love that's ever been shown. Whenever we were unlovable, we didn't even want help. You ever, you ever done that? Went to somebody, tried to forgive them. Uh, you ought to try preaching for just a little bit, all right? You go to somebody with all the love. Miss Debbie, that you can can give them, and first thing they do, they fold up their arms and they look at you and they start passing judgment. What about this one? What about this one? What about pointing out everybody else's sin instead of looking their own? And there you are trying to help them. That's discouraging, but I know it's a characteristic of the devil. Amen. And the devil has got them blinded. 
Amen. You got to keep praying. Got to be persistent. Ain't you glad that the Lord through the Holy Spirit was persistent with you and he didn't give up on you the first time that he come by, but he wooed you through the Holy Spirit. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We look at that man. He went down and fell among thieves. Watch this now. Who come by? Priest did. Huh? Who else come by? The Levites, the worker in the church. Amen. You know who finally helped him? It was an outcast. Among the Jews, they thought all the, the Samaritans as dogs. This man come from where? Jerusalem. That meant most likely he was a what? A like it. You see what happened? A Samaritan, an outcast. He knew that the Jews, <laughs> God help us, the Jews even hated him. But he seen a man in need. You know where the shame lies? Shame lies is in the priest and the Levites. Those that were of strength. Those that had the means. Should have been the first one, brother, to help this man. But yet they passed judgment on him because of his skin color, because of his race, because of his origin of birth, because of his religion. And they spiritually just wiped their feet on him and walked on by. God help us, church, whenever the world starts giving our own more support and more help than what us as Christians and brothers and sisters in Christ are giving them. God help us. Our job is to show love one towards another. And I'm telling you, there was a Samaritan there that day that was willing to reach out and open up his bowels of mercy and have sympathy and help this man. Not only that, for his immediate need, but he told the man at the motel room there, said, whatever, he, he charged us on the tap, he put it on my account. I'll take care of it. Preacher, why should I do this? They didn't do anything to help me. I want to point you to the cross at Calvary and remind you where you were the day Jesus Christ saved you. You were on your way to a devil's hell. You were without, without, you was helpless. You couldn't pay that debt. You couldn't pay that sin. Today, if you're here today and you're lost, I want you to know, you say, I've not committed such heinous crime. Do you love God with all your heart? You never lied, cheated, never blasphemed against, you ever put anything against God? Like I said the other day, have you ever stole anything? Have you ever lied? There ain't a teenager in here that say they haven't lied. Amen. How you know that, preacher? I was one. Amen. I want you to know that God loves you this morning. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son for you. All he asks you is to love him with all your heart and love one another. Show compassion. Quit running off and leaving people behind. It's our job as Christians. It's your job as the strong man of the house. We could go a different direction and spend time on that. Daddy, it's your job. Grandpa, it's your job. Uncle, it's your job. Preacher, deacon, men, it's your job to be the strong man of the house. Amen. It's not your job to, to push your wife towards the door whenever there's a bump in the night. Amen. You should be the first one to stand up and say, I'll be the first line of defense. But what about those that are lost? Amen. What about those that are in sin? Jesus loves you today. He said, look, love you, Lord, with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Would you stand to your feet? When you, if you see someone falling behind, what do you do? Amen. We get a song of invitation.